If y'all ever wondered uh, if you need tire chains or when you need them or what states require you to have them and when, well, y'all stick around. We're going to go over it state by state. All right. guys so uh, like I said we're gonna be going over chain laws and uh, everything today what states require them uh, based on when you need them and uh, things of that nature so uh, there's a lot of if you just google uh, commercial vehicle chain laws uh, then I mean it's gonna pop up all kind of different things um, for the sake of this video I'm I tried to go through and and get the the most recent one most revised one most up-to-date one and um and go over it with y'all now now i just want y'all to be aware that i mean um i mean i'm no dot officer um and i don't know all the state laws i'm just going by what i'm reading here so so guys it's up to you to go google and do your research and and find out for yourself maybe even uh print it off and and keep it in your binder or your truck with you and uh things like that but like I said, um, um, if I'm incorrect with any of this stuff, uh, if y'all have have witnessed or, or went through or anything like that, something different, uh, guys, please leave it in the comments uh, so that way it'll help somebody else out and, um, and everything like that. So, like I said, I'm just going by what I'm reading here uh, on this website. So, uh, this is the most up-to-date one that I found. Uh, it's through NHH Services LLC. It's a uh, commercial vehicle uh, uh, tire chain loss by state. And um, so, just whenever you put this in, be sure that don't just put in tire chain loss by state. Be sure you're putting in commercial vehicle uh, tire chain loss by state. Excuse me. So. Um, but like I said, I'm just going to go over what it says, um, what I understand or what I interpret, interpret it or whatever how you say it by it. So, um, um, and what basically I get out of it. So, so this was uh, updated or revised or put out on December the 5th, 2023. So, uh, yeah, it says updated December uh, 2023. So it says winter is right around the corner, which means higher elevations areas are already getting snow. So it's important. Um, so it's important time for truck drivers to familiarize uh, themselves with the chain laws in the states uh, they normally run. So, guys, some of these states. Um, I mean, it gives you know all the states, but some of them I'm not going to go over because you know some of them really don't apply, such as you know Alabama. Um, um, like Mississippi, Florida, things like that. I'm pretty much just going to go over uh, like some of the northern states, particularly uh, the the uh, like western states, northwestern states, stuff like that. So, oh, da, 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 da. so all right. So the first one's Alabama. I'm not going to go over that. Um, and guys, also keep in mind that you know some of these states, it's and that's the reason I say go do your research because I'm going to tell you how how I think what it's saying and uh, versus what it's actually saying. And uh, so it's up to you to, you know, do your own research. Maybe even call the state and, and ask them uh, personally over the phone. And, um, and like I said, print this out so that way you have it in your truck. But, um, you know, some states, they'll sit there and say, well, you've got to have... Um, that tire like tire chains are mandatory if or when the the uh, tire chain law is in effect 
It doesn't say you have to keep them with you. And hold on. Sorry about that. They, uh, so it doesn't say that you have to keep them with you or that they have to be in your truck through a certain time period. It just says that if the tire chain law is in effect, you have to have them on. Or otherwise, you can get fined. And then there's a couple of states that, um, that actually require them, whether you use them or not. If you go through that section of state, then through a certain time period, those chains have to be in your vehicle. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and name this one right here because we're going through in alphabetical order. And um, I know this don't apply to, to a lot of people, but a lot of drivers. But it's Alaska. So this is what it says. You are not permitted to use chains May from May 1st through September 15th when north of 60 north latitude. Uh, you are not permitted to use chains from April 15th through September the 30th when south of 60 north latitude. If you are operating a vehicle on Sterling Highway, you are not permitted to use chains from May 1st through September 15th. Uh, you would need to obtain a special permit from the Department of Administration if uh, you would like to use chains in one of these prohibited zones. That's all it says. Um, Arizona's a tricky one because, I mean, there are some mountains, you know, like Flagstaff and stuff like that, but this is what it says for, for Arizona. The use of tire chains are allowed when required for safety during the time of snow, ice, or uh, another condition that might cause slippery highways. So it doesn't say that you have to have them during a certain time period or that they have to be in your vehicle during that certain time period. Uh, Arkansas, I can go through that. Um, this was one that was sort of tricky to me because uh, I figured that they would require them, but Evidently, um, as far as, you know, keeping them in your vehicle at all times during a certain time period uh, is California. Um, from my understanding of what I'm reading by this and, you know, reading other uh, websites is that um, California does not require you to have them in your vehicle uh, during, like, say, um, October through April or something like that. It just basically says that if the if the tire chain law is in effect, then you have to have them on, otherwise you can get fired. So, like I said, it doesn't say that you have to have that you have to keep them in your vehicle. So, California, California requires drivers to stop and put on chains when highway signs indicate chains are required. Drivers can be cited by California Highway Patrol and fined if they don't. Typically, drivers have about a mile between um, change required signs and the checkpoint to install chains. During winter weather, it takes at least eight chains for the standard tractor-trailer uh, configuration to comply with the regulations. And uh, guys, I also want to throw this out there too. That I mean, any of you truck drivers watching my videos, this I mean, most of this stuff applies to you. Um, as far as RV transport, eh, it's that's again why you need to actually call the state and find out what you need to do there because like this, it just says that, you know, eight chains. Well, obviously, uh, even a dually don't take eight chains. So, and then I think there's another state that said that uh, the drive wheels, that all drive wheels um, must, um, or I think it said all four drive wheels must, um, have chains on them. Well, obviously a dually don't have four uh, drive wheels. So, um, I mean, it has four tires, but it don't have, you know, it basically only has two. So, four tires, but two drives. And, but anyway, um, as far as, you know, RV transport, the, you know, the camper, even though that the state may require you to have chains on that camper, you need to also check with your company that you're leased on with because 
most companies do not allow you to put chains on campers. Uh, even the manufacturer says, no, you don't put the chains on the campers. Uh, because, I mean, you're just slinging up stuff, and if, I, if those chains was to come apart and break or whatever like that, then you're taking a chance of damaging that camper. And then that's going to come back on you. If you was to put chains on, then that's going to end up being driver damage on your part. So, uh, so my philosophy is, is that one, I don't run where chain laws are required during the winter time. Um, now I may run a close or, you know, stuff like that, but I mean, I don't go through area cause I do not carry chains period. They, um, and, and I mean, I'm not going to put them on anyway, because if it comes to the point to where I got to have chains, I ain't got no business out on that road anyway. So, um, in the 20 years of I've been driving, I've put chains on a big truck once and that was it. So, uh, do I think it's a good idea to, you know, if you plan on carrying chains and maybe don't plan on using them? Uh, get out there and practice absolutely yes uh, chains can come in handy for all kind of different reasons uh, say if you're up at the yard or something in the in indiana and, you, and uh, you get stuck and you can't go nowhere yeah put your chains on and maybe that'll get you out but uh but as far as out there on the highway i don't run chains but all right so california get back to that um let's see where was that all right so during the winter months, uh, there might be traction uh, control or traction chain controls in the mountain areas. When these are established, you will see signs posted along the highway. These signs will also include the type of requirement, which will include one of the following. R1, chains, traction devices, or snow tires are required on the drive axle of all vehicles except four-wheel all-wheel drive vehicles. R2. Chains or traction devices are required on all vehicles except four-wheel, all-wheel drive uh, vehicles with snow tread uh, tires on all four wheels. R3. Chains or traction devices are required on all vehicles, no exception. All right, so again, it doesn't say anything about you have to have the chains during a certain time period. Uh, now, California is different. Do you have to have ch uh, tire chains for the entire state of California? Uh, as far as what I'm reading, no, only certain parts. So, uh, did I say California or Colorado? I think I said Colorado, but yeah, that's what we're talking about is Colorado. All right. So, Colorado, uh, commercial vehicles and trucks. And, and guys, again, I know I keep backing up, but keep in mind, if you are an RV transporter, you are a... Uh, commercial vehicle so you have to abide by these rules uh, commercial vehicles and trucks must have chains vehicles without chains can often lose tracks in causing uh, traffic delays and sometimes road closures for the safety and the traveling public it's critical to use chains uh, to be in compliance with California chain laws all right now here's where the the time period gets in from September the 1st through May the 31st, all trucks, again, all trucks, must carry enough chains on I-70 when traveling between mile marker 259 outside Golden, Colorado, and mile marker 133 in uh, Cerro, Colorado. Some of these names, uh, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing right, especially whenever I get down to Washington. Um, if you get stopped and do not have chains on your truck, the fine is $50 plus a surcharge of $16. Um, if you do not put chains on your truck when the law is in effect, the fine is $500 plus a $79 surcharge. If you do not put chains on and you end up blocking the highway, then the fine will increase to $1,000 plus a $156 surcharge. So, 
Colorado has two different types of chain laws. Level one, and this is probably going to you know apply to to like RV transporters. Level one is single axle combination commercial vehicles must chain up. Trucks must have our uh, all four drive tires in chains. When level one is in effect, all other commercial vehicles must have snow tires or chains. So again, if you're an RV transporter, you're going to be a single axle combination vehicle. So, oh, uh, let's see, level two. When level two is in effect, all commercial vehicles are required to chain up um, the four drive tires. All right, uh, let's see. Here's another one, northern state. Uh, actually, it's northeast. So, chains are permitted. Per, chains are permitted only from November the fifteenth through April thirtieth. The chains cannot damage. Cannot be damaging to the highway's surface. So again, this does not say that you have to carry them. It just says they are permitted. And it doesn't say that you will be fined if you don't have them or don't use them. It just says that they're permitted. So that's the only time that you're allowed to use them. Uh, Delaware, pretty much the same thing. You are permitted to use chains on highways from October 15th through April 15th for safety because of snow, ice, or other conditions tending uh, to cause a vehicle to uh, slide or skid. State officials can restrict travel on highways during emergency situations. Uh, Georgia, uh, Idaho. Uh, officials with the Idaho Department of Transportation can determine uh, that it is unsafe to drive over Lookout Pass and uh, Fourth of July Pass on 90 and Lolo Pass on Highway 12. If it is deemed unsafe, then you will be required to chain up a minimum of one tire on each drive axle and one axle at or near the rear. Uh, advance notices of chain uh, requirements will be posted by Idaho DOT. So again, it doesn't say that you have to keep them in there all the time. It just says that you that you um, have to use them. And it doesn't give a certain you know date or time period. So uh, just basically says, if the chain law is in effect, you have to use them. Um, Illinois, uh, Indiana, uh, it just says uh, tire use or the use of tire chains are allowed when required for safety during time or uh, time of snow, ice, or other conditions. Uh, Iowa, same thing. Kansas, uh, same thing. Kentucky, uh, no person shall use um, a highway not covered with ice. Uh, guys, a lot of these southern states that don't really get ice and really doesn't have big mountains i'm not really gonna go over this because it'll make this video way too long and i'm already sitting at 17 minutes uh main vehicles cannot have tires with with metal studs wires spikes or other metal uh protruding uh from the tire tread from may 1st through october the 1st other than that the use of tire chains are allowed when required uh, for safety during the time of snow, ice, or uh, another condition that might cause slippery highways. Again, uh, unless I specify in here that it that it has to be used during a certain time period, then they don't require it. Or unless I specify that, that they have to be in your vehicle whether you use them or not during a certain time period, then, uh, then that's really not the case. Um, Massachusetts. Massachusetts provides the use of studded or Massachusetts prohibits the use of studded tires and chains between May 1st and November 1st without a permit. Tire chains are allowed when required for the safe for safety during a time of snow, ice, or other uh, slippery conditions. Uh, da, 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 let's see. Montana. Uh, and if the Montana Department of Transportation determines the highways are too dangerous for travel, they may establish uh, the following recommendations. Change or other approved traction devices are recommended, again, recommended for drive wheels. Change or other approved traction devices are required for drive wheels. 
chains required for driver wheels. All right. Um, Nevada. Um, it is unlawful for any person to operate a motor vehicle, whether it is an emergency vehicle or otherwise, without traction devices, tire chains, or snow tires upon any street or highway under icy or snowy conditions. When the highway is marked or posted with signs for the requirement of traction devices, chains, or snow tires. If a highway uh, in this state is marked or posted with signs requiring the use of traction devices, tire chains, or snow tires, a motor vehicle or combination of vehicles must be equipped with traction devices, uh, tire chains, or snow tires if it has a gross weight or combined gross weight of 10,000 pounds or less. Tire chains, uh, if it has a gross weight or, common, or combined gross weight of more than 10,000 pounds. So that's what it says in Nevada. Uh, North Dakota. North Dakota allows metal studs within one sixteenth of an inch beyond tread from October 15th through April 15th. The use of tire chains are allowed when are allowed when required for safety during time of snow, ice, or other uh, slippery conditions. Uh, Oregon. Oregon's laws. Oregon's law applies to all highways in the state. Signs will tell you when you are required to carry chains and when you are required to use them. You will need to have six chains on hand to comply in Oregon. The use of tire chains are allowed when, are allowed when required for safety during time of snow, ice, or other conditions that might cause slippery conditions or slippery highways. Uh, this one is a little bit confusing one because because it says that signs will tell you when you are required to carry chains and when you are required to use them. So it doesn't say that you it doesn't say on here that you have to have them during a certain time period. But it says signs will tell you. So that's a little bit of a tricky one, guys. I don't know. If any of you guys from Oregon or travel through Oregon or has dealt with this situation in Oregon, uh, leave it in the comment and, uh, and let everybody know uh, what you found out. So, uh, or again, call the state of Oregon uh, and, and ask them. Uh, but that's a tricky one, guys, because... On on the website, it doesn't it doesn't give a certain time period. So, I mean, if it doesn't give a certain time period, then how do you know? Uh, it just says that signs will tell you. So, I don't know. I mean, if I'm in Mississippi fixing to head out there, I can't see the signs. So, <laughs> so I don't know whether to carry the change or not. But anyway, maybe y'all get what I'm saying. Um. South Dakota, South Dakota DOT uh, has the authority to restrict travel on roads. Signs will alert truckers to these restrictions. The use of tire chains are allowed when required for safety during a time of snow, ice, or other uh, slippery conditions. Uh, Utah. When any designated highway is so restricted, no vehicle shall be allowed or permitted to use the highway during the period between October the 1st and April the 30th, or when conditions warrant due to adverse or hazardous uh, weather or roadway, roadway conditions as determined by the Utah Department of Transportation, unless an operator of a commercial vehicle with four or more drive wheels other than a bus shall affix tire chains to at least four of the drive wheel tires. So again, it doesn't say that you have to that you have to have the chains with you 
between the time period of April 1st and April or October 1st and April 30th. It just says that no vehicle shall be allowed or permitted the use of the highway. So basically, if chain law is in effect during those times, then you can't drive on it. So if it doesn't, um, it's, if the tire chain laws aren't are not in effect, then my understanding is you don't have to have them during even though even during that time period. Only if you plan on using the highway. That's my understanding. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. All right. Here's the big one. Washington. Washington State. Uh, vehicles over 10,000 pounds GVW shall carry a minimum of two extra chains for use in the event that road conditions require the use of more chains or that chains in the in use are broken or otherwise made uh, unless yeah uh, are made useless WAC 204-24-050 Approved chains for vehicles over 10,000 pounds, gross vehicle weight shall have at least uh, two side chains attached, sufficient cross chains of hardened metal steel or hardened metal so that at least one cross chain is in contact with the road surface at all times. Plastic chains shall not be required. Um, and guys, this also goes back to a lot of people. Instead of carrying chains, they use snow tire or uh, uh, like tire socks, and because uh, they're lighter weight, they're cheaper to buy. But um, from my understanding, like this, if like in Washington, uh, I'm pretty sure you're gonna have to have actual chains because uh, it says plastic chains shall not be allowed. So if plastic's not allowed, then obviously them snow socks are probably not going to be, or tire socks are not going to be allowed. I don't know. Uh, leave it in the comment. Let me know. The Washington State Patrol may approve other devices as chains if the devices are, equiv are equivalent to regular chains uh, in performance. Cable chains allowed. So, I don't know. If tire socks meet the requirements of tire chains, they might be allowed. Again, leave it in the comment. Let everybody know. So, uh, and on this website, there's a, a link that you can click to um, uh, for a diagram of tire chain placements. Um, on the following routes, now here's where it gets tricky. On the following routes, all vehicles and combinations of vehicles over 10,000 pounds shall carry sufficient tire chains to meet the requirements from November the 1st through April the 1st of each year or at other times when chains are required for such vehicles. And there's a lot of roads on here. I-90 uh, between North Bend, which is mile post 32, and Ellensburg, mile post 101. I-82 between Ellensburg, exit 3, mile post 3.00, and uh, Sella, I'm hoping I'm pronouncing these, these towns right, exit 26, mile post 26. Uh, State Route 97 between mile post 145 and mile post 185. State Route uh, two between Dryden, mile post 108, and index uh, mile post 36. State Route 12 between Packwood, mile post 135, and Notches, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, mile post 187. State Route 97 between Junction, State Route 14, mile post 4, Columbia River, and uh, Toppenish, I hope I'm pronouncing it right, mile post 59. State Route 410 from Enumclaw, the uh, 
two notches. Um, State Route 20 between Tenasket, mile post 262, and Kettle Falls, mile post 342. State Route 155 between Amic, which is mile post 79, and Nespelum, mile post 45. State Route 970 between mile post 0 and mile post 10. Uh, State Route 14, mile post 18 to Junction 97, mile post 102. Uh, State Route 542, Mount Baker Highway between mile post 22.91 and mile post 57.26. Vehicles making local deliveries as indicated on bills of lading and not crossing the mountain pass are exempt from this requirement if operating outside of the chain uh, required areas. The Washington State Department of Transportation or Washington State Patrol may prohibit any vehicle from entering a chain approved traction tire control area when it is determined that the vehicle will experience difficulty in safely traveling traveling the area and so that's all for Washington that was a mouthful um, Wyoming Wyoming's chain law includes two levels of restrictions that can be implemented on Pacific Highway sections when conditions warrant Wyoming's chain law includes two levels of restrictions that can be implemented on Pacific, um, let's see, highway sections when conditions warrant. I guess they entered that twice because I just read it twice, didn't I? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. All right. So level one, when conditions are hazardous, travel can be restricted to vehicles equipped with tire chains, vehicles with adequate snow tires, or all-wheel drive vehicles. Level two, when conditions are, are extremely hazardous, travel can be restricted to vehicles equipped with tire chains or all-wheel drive vehicles equipped with adequate mud or snow or all-wheel rated tires. Under level two, commercial vehicles must have chains on at least two of the drive wheels at opposite ends of the same drive axle. Uh, again, guys, RV transport, you are a commercial vehicle. Do not stop in the driving lane to install or remove chains. So basically pull over on the side of the road or an exit ramp. Uh, penalties. Penalties for violation, $255 or $250 for violating the travel restriction or $750 for a violation that results in a highway in a highway closure. So, so guys, that's all the states. Um, I just went over uh, the what I read in my interpretation. And uh, guys, like I said, it's up to you uh, to either call or go look at this and print it out or whatever uh so uh it's up to you to know the laws i'm just passing on what i've read and and my interpretation of it so but uh but anyway um again as far as running tires uh chains and stuff like that honestly guys if you're an rv transport um uh, I, don't, I wouldn't care if the if the company require or required you to have them or or use them on a camper or not. You know, it's one thing to use them on your vehicle, but I don't care if me personally, I don't care if the company requires you to use them or allows you to use them or whatever on a camper. I would not use them on that camper because if that camper gets damaged, then you are the one that's going to be responsible for it. So, um, so you're going to have a damage claim, and then you're going to be responsible for paying it out of your bond. So, me personally, I wouldn't use them. Uh, me personally, um, like I said, 
I don't use tire chains. If it comes to the point I gotta have tire chains, I ain't got no business being out there on that highway. Uh, it's done got too dangerous. So, but guys, I hope this helps somebody out. Uh, like I said, if you have anything to add, anything you've experienced, uh, anything like that, please leave it in the comments and uh, and let other people know. Uh, so, uh, like I said, some of these laws have already went into effect. Uh, this is today is October the 9th, uh, 2024. So, uh, so like I said, some of these laws have already went into effect. Uh, so, uh, if they require you to have the, the chains in your truck at all times during certain time periods, uh, during those certain routes, say like Washington and Colorado, then uh, you either need to get some chains or don't go out there. So, um, don't get caught with not putting your chains on if the, tire, if the chain laws are in effect. And don't get caught for not having the chains if that state requires you to during a certain time period because um if you get pulled over for a dot inspection even though it might be 60 degrees outside and sun shining the that's going to be part of your dot inspection and um i mean it's just going to be like having to have your fire extinguisher and your triangles and stuff like that uh they're going to be looking for that stuff and if you ain't got it you're going to get a ticket so but guys sorry this video went so long but i was trying to go through each state and uh and give y'all uh information on that i've had uh i've had a lot of people comment and email me asking about chain loss so i figured i'd just get on here and just make a video on it so um so yeah i uh, hope y'all watched all the way through and um and again, thank y'all for watching. So, guys, I got uh, several more uh, videos coming out as far as RV transport, different topics. Uh, it's basically my most common questions in RV transport. And uh, but instead of making a you know an hour long video, then I'm trying to break them down and make them shorter videos and go over them by topic and maybe a little bit more in depth. So, um, so again, y'all like, share, subscribe, hit that bell notification so that way you know when a new video comes out. And um uh, yep so uh quick update on my truck um <laughs> i don't know still waiting on parts so uh as soon as i get my truck back um uh, i'm planning on making it up an updated video from basically one that i made a long time ago which is getting started on a budget so uh getting started in rv transport on a budget so uh so y'all stick around for that um hopefully i keep saying this every week but um hopefully next week i have my truck back i don't know uh, if he ain't started on it by this weekend then more than likely i'm probably just going to go get it i'm gonna get my own parts and then um probably me and c farmer are going to do it ourselves so but i haven't really decided that yet but most likely that's what's going to happen so but again, like, share, subscribe, and I will get back with y'all in the next one. As always, y'all be safe. Semper Fi.